all right. Well, it's a beautiful morning, and the wind is very, very calm. Now, it's been a very wet week, and we've just got a calm, settled, beautiful day today, which is, uh, so I think the theme of today is probably going to be um, floods, because a lot of the roads are still flooded, and a lot of the... Um, a lot of the fields around the area are probably going to be flooded as well. So I'm just waiting to see what the wind does before I lay out my wing. It's predominantly southerly. So I'll lay up, get the engine warmed up, and uh, I'll see you back in the air. All right, let's get set up for a forward launch. Ugh. Wait for a little gust if there is one, or just hit it. I might just hit it. I'm gonna get a gust. Run like fuck! <sighs> oh yeah! Woohoo! Love it, love it, love it. Nicely, nice easy launch. Love it. Careful. Um, wind direction on the ground, southeasterly. Wind direction aloft, westerly. A clear indication of an inversion, which is obvious because it's really cold down there today. Um, it is a westerly, but it's a very light westerly. So, uh, sometimes you're plan on the ground, obviously you need to check winds aloft and direction. Wind shear is standard, you'll always get a slight variation because of uh, wind shear, because of the friction caused by the wind on the ground, but you will, uh, in an inversion, you may take off in the opposite direction from the wind, the prevailing wind direction, which is westerly. Unusual. I've got a runway, very, very fortunate, but pros and cons of a runway. So the benefit I have is the runway generally is drier, much drier, and a grassed airstrip. The downside is if I get that launch wrong and I pancake on my face, then I am in serious shit uh, when it comes to landing because that asphalt is not like road asphalt, it is thick, big big chunks and that's the brings me on to the other downside it catches the very fine lines in your wing and that's something you gotta to watch out for and do your wing checks oh we're showing you that view wow nice what's going on here <laughs> look at this everyone's confused i'm confused how do i get in how do i get in <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Right, let's pause that rocket. Oh my word. Apologies for that. Rocket, that's my music as I'm flying. I've had my Air Conception Nitro for five years now. Still flying brilliantly. Still love it. Um, but you know what it's like, you get itchy feet and you think there might be something better right there or could I just do with the change. So I've been looking at the other power motors and I'm really interested in all your opinions. So clearly we all have a favourite and that's the current motor we fly as long as it doesn't break down. That for me is the definition of a favourite two stroke engine. It works when you need it to. It starts in a relatively straightforward manner. 
and uh, and it gives you the performance that you need. So we're all slightly different. We all some some people do lots of climbing and swooping. Some people do cross country. I mainly do cross country. The only other motor that's really caught my attention, and I'm sure others have seen it, is the Monster EFI. And so Parajet are selling that on the Mav Max frame. The thing I'm struggling with is the weight difference. So my air conception nitro is just under 21 kilos. We'll call it 21. And with my reserve on is uh, 23 kilos. I've got quite a large reserve, but it's, yeah, it's two and a half kilos, my ozone angel. So let's say 23 kilos before I put fuel in it. Today I've taken off with 13 litres of fuel, which is about 12 kilos. So I'm up at 35 kilos, right? I'm not, and I get about three and a half to four liters an hour out of this. So that 13 liters will do me two and a half, comfortably two and a half, but realistically more like three hours. It's a lot of flooded. Blame I hope that house is okay. So back to the chat. So, really interesting in the EFI motor because of its, uh, the fact that it's got electronic fuel injection, obviously, so it, it's, uh, the power should be, uh, the fuel arm max will be adjustable for different heights, which is uh, excellent. But the MAF max start weight is 30 kilos, according to the PowerJet website. So that's the frame and motor. That's before a reserve. So with a reserve on, you're looking at 32 minimum, 32 kilos, before you put anything else on the machine. So with, let's say, 10 liters, 10, 11 liters to be conservative, you're taking off with 42 kilos. Potentially, if you fill it, you're up at 45, 46 kilos. Now, I consider myself pretty fit. I run a lot, I cycle, I train four or five times a week on running with this with a full tank of fuel to pull the wing up and get up to speed on a low wind day which are the good days to fly let's face it is a complete bitch but doing that with an extra you know nine kilos on my back i can't i can't imagine doing that um, i would just end up wanting to carry less fuel to offset for the excess weight the frame and the motor so that mental exercise has helped me uh, conclude that I shouldn't change for the minute until I guess my decision point will be when this motor starts to give me problems again. Uh, but thanks to Alex Anderson and the servicing that he does of our conception, uh, it's been pretty sweet so far. So uh, you can laugh at me later this year when it breaks and I'm cursing it, but uh, I've had many hundreds of hours of uh, hassle-free flying. I have a little uh, play around in the clouds. So you can see the top of it is just spiraling over very slowly. Very pretty. So you've got to watch your height here. Watch out that you're not getting drawn down low into uh, pylons or anything. So I'm still at 400 feet. So I'm Plenty high. I the crests of it. You can see the cresty bits. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that is much more turbulent than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, what did I expect? I could see it. Okay. Wee, lovely. Very cool. So these are the reservoirs for the summer. Water in all the crops. Wow. Well, the horses are all currently sprinting up the gallops, which is pretty impressive. Let's see if I can uh, video it. You can do it. It's a long way up that hill. All the way down. Say 
decided to use the risk course uh, as my turning point. Uh, and I'm going to head north to Sua, and then up to Neely, and then over around the north side of Leckenheath, uh, back to Honington. Quite a big solar farm here, just to the uh, west of Soa. There's Soa over there. This is quite a big one. out this morning. Oh, lovely. God, it must be cold in the boat. So, gloves are doing all right, but one of my fingers on my right hand is bloody cold. Oh, that's a lot of water. Big old lid. Have a look at the eights. Wow. Nice. Oh, <laughs> birdies are going underwater. Oh, look at this. Aria felt well. How do you tell an RAF base has been taken over by Americans? It has a baseball field. So and I've got to thread the needle now between Lake and Heath and military training area, which is a no-fly zone. Look at that. So we're... Uh, North of Lake and Heath at the minute. Uh, the river has burst its bank for many miles. Uh, train tracks looking a little bit precarious at some points. This is the front of Thetford, Attlebred, Norwich, Cambridge line, and it's all looking a little bit wet. Oh, it's lovely up here. Look at this. How gorgeous. Beautiful fluffy clouds everywhere. The sun's got some heat in it now as well, so it's just very pretty. Anyway, let's fly around some clouds. Go, that's what it's like to fly through a cloud. <laughs> you haven't done it before? You have now. 
Ah. As you can see, some of them have a little bit of a roller in them. I'll give you a little bit of uh, turbulence, but they're lovely. Especially flying around the edges of them. <laughs> nice. And as you can see, they're starting to form streets. So they actually form these linear patterns. When the, when the weather's quite stable, you get them in rows. Oh yes. Oh, that was nice. Oh yes. Nice. So, I wouldn't have done that a couple of years ago when I was less experienced. They used to panic on it getting here near clouds. And that's completely understandable because they're an unknown. You don't know how thick it is. You don't know how dynamic it's going to be. I mean, ultimately, if it's a big cloud, it's at the top of a thermal, it's going to be very dynamic and you do not go into it. But uh, these little fluffy clouds, low level, are perfect for playing in. Well, let's see what the wind's doing now. Still the same direction? Yeah, it would be. No, it's not. It is turned 90 degrees. Yeah, it's this way now. I took off that way. <laughs> and it's turned 90 degrees. And that's why I put my little wind indicator in. Oh, very peaceful, nice and quiet. Oh, the runway is so wet, my wing. Don't wet my wing. Come on, I'll land on one side. That'll do. Oh, I'm going to have to dry it now. Damn it. So the motor is running well, isn't it? Um, so that was two hours 20, uh, 111 kilometers, and I used uh, 10 and a half liters. So pretty happy with that. Engine's doing very well, as you can see, looking, looking pretty sharp. No issues with it at all. Superb flight, perfect conditions today. I thought there would be, I hoped it, they would be, and uh, that's what we got. So, catch you next time.